All right, guys. So happy Monday. It is um, it's the 9th of May. So we are into our first full week, second week, second week already of the month of May. And um, we're, we're coming down the home stretch. I'm sure kids are about finishing up with school for the year. I know preschool is almost over for us and school ends June 6th. And before we know it, we'll be out for the summer. We'll be enjoying the summer weather. So just a quick announcement is that starting next month, so starting in June, our calls are going to be on Mondays, still on Mondays, but at 12 noon instead of 9 p.m. So I'm going to do daytime calls throughout the summer just because, I don't know about you guys, but we like to play outside at night and it doesn't get dark till later. And so... I just wanted to, you know, free up the evenings for my family to be with my family. So, and it seems I get a good turnout during the day as when I do my other calls. So we're going to do them during the day. They'll be recorded. They'll be at 12 noon. So hopefully the people on the West Coast can catch it on their way to work and the people on the East Coast can catch it on their lunch break. So just make sure you mark that down. The first one will actually, and I'll remind you guys, but the first one will be June 6th. Um, will be our first daytime call that we will have. But everything will stay the same for the month of May. So anyways, um, if you don't know me, my name is Melanie Mitro, and I uh, am the host of tonight's call. We've got some other great ladies that you see up there in the corner of our screen. They're co-presenting this evening, and we are working on our series this month, and it's all about running effective challenge groups. And this is our part two of our series. If you did not get a chance to listen to last week's Go Back, to the files section of the team page and under coach call recordings are all the recordings that we have ever done as a team. So every Monday night recording should be in there. You can go back, you can take a listen at last week's to sort of set it up for you guys. And this week we're gonna continue on. Um, the biggest thing about the business is that we come into this business and we want to instantly be successful. We want to instantly begin to, you know, have customers that are getting results. We want to start making an income. We want to grow our business and build a team, but none of that can really happen until we can master the basics. And I was having this conversation earlier today with my three vital behaviors group and I talked to them about, you know, building a team. And I said, guys, you know, before you can start transitioning customers to coaches, before you can really get out there and begin recruiting amazing people to your team, you know, you really have to master the art of inviting and doing your three vital behaviors, which is your inviting and your following up and you're adding people to your contact list and personal development and being a product of the product. Like all of those things are the foundation of our business and running challenge groups is the cornerstone of what we do. We help people get amazing results. And by doing that, that is how we find the people that will make great coaches. That's how we find our advocates or even our referral sources come from our challenge groups. And if we just if we either neglect to run challenge groups or we don't run them very effectively, it doesn't create a funnel of people that we can then transition into coaches. It is much harder to go out there and just invite people into the business and get them started, right? It's harder to do that. It happens. We definitely all have people on our radar that we know would make great coaches that do come in for the business side of things. But as you develop to that leadership role, how do you train your team or your new coaches if you yourself aren't running those challenge groups? So that's why it's so important that you take the time to make sure that before you move on to building a team, that you can run an effective challenge group. That is important. So you're going to hear tonight from three coaches that are a part of our team. They're all diamond and above coaches. They're going to introduce themselves um, tonight as they as they come onto the call and tell just a little bit about who they are and you know how they got started as a coach. And then they're going to give you their top tips for running effective challenge groups. So I talked about mine last week, and you're going to hear from theirs. Um, you're going to hear theirs this week. So before we get into that, let's just do a few announcements. So number one, we've got Summit coming up here at the end of July. So if you are if you are in this business to build the business, you need to be at Summit no matter what. Like it is important that you go. You can bunk up with four other women, or if you're a guy, find some buddies that you can room with together, or take your spouse and split the cost and pack Shakeology and 
protein bars and you can basically live pretty cheap for those couple of days, right? So, and it's not super expensive, or at least I don't think it's super expensive to get to Nashville as far as flights go. I know it's not from Pittsburgh, um, but it's worth it. It is worth every penny of the investment because number one, you get to see the vision and the mission of Beachbody in, in person. It's so, it's just so, it's an amazing atmosphere to also be, to meet people from our team that you see as little Facebook squares, but to put a face, you know, an actual physical face with the people that you talk to or that you, you know, run this business with to be able to get to do the group workouts, to listen to trainings from other top coaches. My first summit, I literally came home with a notebook full of notes and it was in Vegas. So I had a four hour flight home. And I remember just making this a game plan on the, on the plane, on the way home. And I was just pumped up. I was pumped up about my business and that sort of propelled me into the next steps. But to also, I didn't understand what I could actually accomplish. And when I saw people on stage being recognized, when I saw, you know, people being in the top 10 and, and I heard people speak, I sat there and I was like, well, why not me? It sort of opened the doors for me to say, all right, if I can dream it, I can do it. And I started putting it into action and it started to happen. So I want you guys to be there and we are going to get together as a team. Last year we did a team training this year. We're not doing a team training, but we are getting together on that Thursday. So Summit kicks off Thursday night. We're going to be at Tequila Cowboys that Thursday afternoon. Um, and if you aren't in our, our page, our Dream Team is going to Nashville Facebook page. We have a closed group. Make sure your upline adds you. And that's where I'm going to start posting about in the next week. I'm going to have tickets. You're going to have to buy a ticket. You'll have a wristband to get into that event. So, uh, so I keep it only to the Dream Team. I don't want other teams to be there and it's only for you, right? So that will be happening. That way we can get together, we can mix and mingle. We're gonna hopefully have a microphone so we can do some recognition, some shout outs, some fun stuff. And then it's just kind of um, time for us to be together as a team because with 25,000 people at Summit, there's a good chance we may not see each other again and have the chance to kind of talk, all right? So that will happen on Thursday. Um, let me see what other announcements. If you didn't get a chance to listen to the national wake up call today, go check it out, especially if you're new to the business or you're not very educated on the performance line. There's a lot of great stuff that they talk about today in how to promote and share the performance line. And then last week's recording, if you go back to either the podcast or go to the archives, um, Christina Delgado talked about success club and she did a really powerful call last week about success club. So go check that out too. All right. Okay. So it's the end of the month. We've got some, we've got recognition from last week. So, um, and all the new stuff came out, leadership ladder rungs came out. So if anybody advanced in the leadership ladder, if you move from team builder, um, you know, business starter, team builder, team leader, executive organizational, congratulations. I know I can't see my entire team, but I did get my personally sponsored coaches and I'm working on some recognition for that. So congratulations to those that moved up that leadership ladder. Congratulations to anybody that achieved Success Club 5 All-Stars or All-Star Legends. That's a really incredible accomplishment. So congrats on a job well done. The elite rankings and elite reports will come out for anybody diamond and above this upcoming week. So you can be checking for that. Um, probably Thursday or Friday, most likely Friday morning. Those will be updated in your back office too. All right. So top producers from last week. So these are the people that had over 500 personal volume. This number does not come from your team, but it comes from you yourself, what you personally have purchased or you've sold to customers, not coaches, but customers. So Kim Danger is our top producer for last week. She had 1,875 volume points, personal volume points. So that came from her customer sales. So congratulations on being our top producer last week. Sarah Ross came in second with 1,545 PV. Uh, Wendy Miles and Rachel Mitchell and Shannon Hargrave. You guys were our top five top producers for last week. And But then also congratulations to everybody on this list and everybody who even just helped one person, anybody that just sold their first challenge pack last week or had their first Shakeology sale. Like congratulations guys on really taking that step to invite, to follow up, to close the sale and to help people get better results. I'm really proud of you and very thankful to have you guys as a part of our team, just doing amazing things. All right, our top recruiters for last week. So these were the coaches that recruited four or more coaches in the last week. So Marlena Hedin had five 
new coaches. Um, Carrington Bass had five, Erica Chapman four, and Kelly Mulholland had four new coaches. So congrats, guys. Um, nice work. And this is as far as I can see down in my organization. So if I if there is somebody that's further down and my report doesn't pull it, I apologize. But this is this is what I could see. So congrats. Um, Success Club 10. So the coaches that have already, it's the ninth of the month, and I know I talked about it last week a little bit, how I set my own bar, you know, I try to hit Success Club 10 by the 10th so that it's out of the way so that I don't have to, to stress about it. I don't have to get to the end of the month and hope that, that I get my goal, right? I can focus on finding coaches and recruiting. Um, and these are coaches that are doing the same thing. And these are coaches that are getting customer leads because they're hitting Success Club 10 and higher. So Krista Meyer, already at 16 Success Club points for the month, incredible. Jenny Nate has 14 Success Club points. Kelly Maholland has 14. Kim Danger has 14. Megan Geis, 13. Marlena has 12. Brooke Benson has 12. Cena Williams, 12. Mackenzie Goss has 12. Chad Meyer, Shelby Little, both have 12. Brett. Cortell, 11, Caroline Rosen, 10, JC Fisher, Clorenda Price, and Wendy Mouse all had 10 points. So nice work, guys. Keep, keep it up. That's impressive. Way to set the pace for everybody else. And these are the coaches that have achieved Success Club 5 or higher so far, 5 all the way to 9. So you've checked that off the box, and you are on the right path to success for this month. So good job. Um, you guys now can keep on going. Anything over and above is just icing on the cake, and you can kind of focus your attention towards um, towards recruiting for the month. Also, those of you that are Success Club um Success starter. So coaches, if you're just signing up and you just is your first month in the business or last month was the first month in your business, you're eligible to earn a free summit ticket. So that means your first three consecutive months in the business. So if you signed up in, in April, it's April, May, June, or if you or it's May, June, July. If you signed up in May, it's May, June, July, or June, July, August, right? So it's three consecutive months. You have the month you signed up or the month after, and you'll earn a free summit ticket for next year. And you get to be on a call with Carl Deichler, your first month that you hit success club and then your next consecutive months after that so that's pretty cool you know that's a pretty cool prize especially considering that a, a ticket to summit is 125 sometimes up to 220 dollars depending on which ticket you end up with so um, i encourage all of you to just shoot for the stars and really aim to get that success club all stars all right those are we're short and sweet on the announcements tonight because i really want to make sure that we take the time to get right into our presentation this evening Again, I told you a little bit about the importance of running effective challenge groups. And Erin Trail, I don't know how many of you know Erin. She is part of Forever Fit. Deidre Penrose is her upline. And she's a diamond coach. She's incredible, incredible um, transformation. If you have not seen it yet, you have to Google Erin Trail's transformation because it's amazing. But she also, word on the street is that she runs effective challenge groups and some of the best challenge groups out there. And so we asked Erin if she would participate. And she's a nurse and she works the night shift. So she couldn't be on live but was willing to make us a video. So I'm going to play this video for you guys. And I want you to, I want you to take note. And I want you to, at the end of this, I want you just to say, like, this is what stuck out to me. Um, this is what I noticed about Aaron's groups that maybe I don't do or that I could be better at. Um, and then we're going to have a quick discussion, and then we will move on because we still have two other beautiful ladies. So let me just pull this up here. And if you guys can just let me know if you can't hear it, I would appreciate that. Hey guys, my name is Erin Terrell. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so sorry I couldn't be there live. My schedule just wouldn't allow it. But thank you um, for letting me talk to you a little bit tonight about challenge groups. I want to talk to you um, about what I do, maybe a little bit differently in my challenge group, hopefully give you some bits of information that you can take forward and um, use in your challenge group to make them more effective. So I love challenge groups. It's really no secret in my um, team that that's just kind of what I do. It's kind of what I'm known for. Um, I've had challenges have great success, whether it be fees, I reflect on weight loss, um, to I had a group of challengers that told me that they could never even walk around 
the neighborhood. And then this weekend, they got together, not this weekend, what was it, two weekends ago, got together and ran the relay for the Pittsburgh Marathon. Like, how cool is that? Like, we need to get excited about these challenge groups. We need to live them with passion. I know this might sound like quirky and crazy and silly, but we really do have the ability to change or save somebody's life. And I'll explain a little bit more about that when I talk about how I run my challenge groups. But um, I also love challenge groups because that's where I found fitness. That's where I found each body. That's where I found myself. That's where I got my life back and lost 100 pounds. So um, thank you again so much. And my little tidbit and tips that I hope you take away are, um, I'm going to bullet point them and then I'll explain. So lead with passion, make it about food, not fitness, make it a family affair, and help them celebrate victories along the way. So when I'm talking about leading with passion, um, for myself, I am a nurse by treat. And I, there are many times where I'm taking care of patients with what I believe are preventable health conditions. Health conditions related to poor health choices, related to obesity, um, things like that. So it's not unusual for me after a shift at work to get on um, Facebook Live or make a video for my challengers and talk to them about how how they might not think about the choices that they're making today are a big deal, but how it compounds over the next 10 or 15 years, what that would look like for them. What, um, you know, sometimes like just like what my patients tell me, what they wish they knew, what, what their takeaways for their life were. Leave with passion, whatever your past may be. You know, maybe you see a mom on the front bench and she's, she's overweight or she, you can tell she just doesn't have the confidence to get up and run with her kids. And explain to your challengers, tell them how that made you feel and how you don't want that to be them. You want to give them the gift of health and fitness and lead it with passion. Show them, don't just type it, like make a video, be raw, be real. And um, I promise you it's freeing as a coach and to see the reaction that my challenges will give me to ask if they can share this with you know, the aunt of our husband or somebody who's making poor health choices. It's, it's awesome because we can inspire people inside of our challenge group, but then they can go out and inspire other people and kind of, you know, take forward. So lead with passion, get on, make a video. Um, probably my biggest tip is tip number two, which is to talk about, make it about food and not fitness. So we tell our challengers all the time, right, that this is 80% in the kitchen and 20% about your workout and blah, blah, blah. But when you're posting, are your posts 80% about food and 20% about fitness? Probably not. When you're um, talking to them, is it, are we talking mostly about nutrition or mostly about fitness motivation? Um, so I usually post something motivational in the morning. And my real focus is to get them into the, the food. I want them to think about the food. I don't want them to think about the calories, the fat, and the carbs. I really want them to think about the food like on a molecular level. We want to change their mindset and how they think about food because weight loss is a product of good nutrition, I promise. <laughs> so I want them to, to know about the difference between soy versus whey protein and artificial flavors and artificial sweeteners and what that does to them what that does to their brain, what that does to their cravings. Um, not only does that help with your psychology retention inadvertently, but it also, like I said, helps them with their weight loss journey because when you give people knowledge beyond don't, don't eat that because I told you not to or don't eat that bad for you, when you give them the real knowledge, when they change their mindset of thinking about food as either fighting or fueling disease, when they think about food as not just filling their stomach, but fueling their cells. When they think about it that way, they are more apt 
to make these changes and to make them on a daily basis. Um, so I challenge you, you know, read, read a great book about nutrition, dive into nutrition, dive into cravings, dive into this, that. Talk to them about a cheat meal. Don't just tell them like, oh, it's okay to have a cheat meal, reset your metabolism. What kind of cheat meal? What should a cheat meal look like? Give them the science, the art behind metabolism, behind nutrition. That is probably my, my biggest tip because, I, like I said, I feel like when you give people knowledge, you give them power, and when they have power, they will change if they want to. Um, make it a family affair. So how many of you have had challengers that have said, I do so good during the day and my kids get home and then they pull out all their snacks and then I'm like picking up their snacks and then I pick up their dinner and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, okay, well, what are the kids snacking? And they're like, oh, you know, Captain Crunch and Cheese Cold. Why do you have that in your house? I mean, I say it nicer than that, but that's what I'm really thinking. Like, why do you have that in your house? If we just talked about food being fuel and not for filling stomachs. Why are you giving that to your kids on a daily basis? So I want them to think about it differently for their entire family because a lot of the times being overweight is a family problem. It's not just one person. So I, I want them to think about it. I want them to think about the habits that they learned in childhood, and I don't want them to pass that on to their kid. I explain to them that the cycle ends now. You don't want to pass how you feel about your body and how you feel about food onto your daughter. You want to teach your daughter a whole new set of habits. So let's do it. Let's do it together. Let's do it now. And it's amazing when you put some heart strings and some knowledge in there, how people can change for whether they're, they want to inspire their mom or they want to inspire their children or their spouse, whatever it may be, they're more apt to make changes when it's not about them, when they see that they can help somebody else change their life too. You know, when you explain to them that a box of Kraft McGree and cheese has warning labels in other countries and, and why that is, they, they will make better health choices for their entire family. And they'll say, well, I don't want to make a meal for my kids and a meal for my husband and a meal for myself. And so you give them the tools and the recipes and you explain to them what works for you and what works for your family and how they can go out to have ice cream. You know, just go to a yogurt joint and, and visualize what a half cup looks like and put fruit and a few chocolate chips on it. And then you're having a treat. You get to enjoy that moment with your family but you didn't undo your whole day because you probably only ate 150 calories. Show them what, how many calories is in a thing of french fries. Most people don't realize what portion looks like. They don't realize what calories really are and how much it would really take to burn them off. They're, they're not thinking about it. So when you give them that knowledge and you give them the skills on how they can use it for their entire family, how they can take a recipe and modify it and make it kid friendly and okay for their husband and fit into their meal plan. You're giving them power on so many levels and they will change it and they will break bad habits. And I mean, let's face it, childhood obesity, that starts with us. We can, we can change this. We can fuel the change. We just have to educate the willing. So when we make this a family affair, you will see much more success. Um, create small victories along the way. So how I do this is when I ask my challengers for daily accountability posts. So when I'm posting that, you know, if I have a challenger that's consistently reading her food as a three, and then one day she reads it as a five, I don't just write like, oh, good job, way to go, keep it up. That's that's not adding value. Add value when someone posts in your challenge group. So I'll say, like, okay, what was the difference? What did you meal plan? Was there food that you found? Did you, was there something I said? Like, what was the difference? And now all of a sudden you're rating your food at five when you were rating it at three. When you're, when, when they're talking about exercise, okay, well, 
what could you do this week that you couldn't do last week? If you have a challenger like me that had 100 pounds to lose, they're not going to see success in rating their food as a five for the day. But if you can create that success for them, then in, and you can create small victories along the way, you are going to win because you're going to help them change their mindset because they're going to think, what did I do differently? Oh, yeah, I did that differently. Oh, yeah, I could do that, that those burpees I couldn't do last week. I did it. I accomplished it. And you're changing their mindset. So you're giving them knowledge and you're changing their mindset. And um, that is really the key to changing who, who they are and how they're, how they're going to look at this challenge. It's not as a burden. And I also do create a point system. Um, I do this off and on more so recently because I like it for a few reasons and I'll explain why. One, when I'm doing a point system, I'm always, I'm not checking in on the fly or in the car. So I'm staying more true to my office hours. Um, when I'm typing and not doing it on my phone, I, I can do it faster. I can provide more value. And it helps me track when my check, who's falling off the bandwagon because I'm tracking their daily accountability and I can see, oh, so and so, like, she should have like five accountability posts by now and she only has two. Like, let me send her a message. So, I'll explain to you a little bit about my, how my point system works. Um, you get one, one point for a daily accountability post, one point for a motivational post, whether you post on somebody else's um, comments or whether you post a motivational quote and one point for posting a meal picture you get five points for doing a challenge so if you have a plank challenge or a wall challenge a water jumping challenge you get five points just for participating uh, five points for sharing the weekly meal plan and five points for sharing a meal picture with the rest of them. then 10 points for giving me a referral 10 points for talking about your journey on your personal Facebook and tagging me as your coach, and 10 points for sharing your before and after pictures with me. Um, I don't ever want anyone to get discouraged, so I do the points weekly. So I have small prizes, whether it be a shaker cup, under armor headbands, um, workout underwear, <laughs> which actually are kind of my challenger's favorite, um, shakeology samples, whatever it might be, just some small prize to help them um, to get excited. So the, the points go Saturday to Saturday. I announce the winner on Sunday. Everyone starts over on Sunday and then we start again. You'll notice that nothing in there is about weight loss. So at the very end, I'll add some bonus points for percentage of weight loss. Um, but this is how I can get my challengers to show up to the group because I know that they have this negative mindset going on upstairs. They've tried other things. They're not confident, they don't want to post, blah, blah, blah. But when you give them something to post for, they start to become invested, not only in their journey, but they start to become invested in other people's journeys. They find long-term running needs. Um, so you really create kind of a culture in that group, and that will help them stay accountable to not only themselves, but to each other. So those are my tips on how to create successful challenge groups. I hope that that helps. If you guys have any questions, feel free to personal message me or just um, post in the recording. And I hope you guys have a great rest of the call. Yay, she did such a good job, right guys? All right, so if you would like to share that recording, I'm gonna just post it in the, um, in the comments there, but that's her recording and Erin Trail is who was on there. She did a great job. There's her name. Go follow her page. Go look her up. She has an amazing transformation. So what, what stuck out to you guys that you think that, Hey, I could do, I could do this differently, or I don't do enough of, of this certain thing. Um, if you guys just want to comment in the comment section, I know for me, I've always focused on food and food is so important. And I always talk about 80% of your results come from what you eat, because if you can't change your nutrition, you're going to have a really hard time, right? You're just going to fall back into that. Yes. Have to begin focusing more on food points. I like the points. 
focus on food. I like the family. I do. I really do. I don't really use the point system, um, and I know the other two girls are going to kind of talk a little bit about that, which is good because we can pick their brain for it. Uh, and maybe one of you guys can think about this too, like how if you have a large challenge group, do you make people keep track of their own points, or how do you do it? Do you have it in the files section? So maybe that would be something to help out too. I think that's a good idea. Um, I love when recipes were posted. Yeah. My post tonight on my Facebook wall is about getting the family involved point system. Yes. Explain how they could change their futures and their family members' futures. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. So, you know, our challenge groups are, I mean, and you think about it when people sign up to be in a challenge group, you know, they invested in you. They've been, they trust you. They want you to be their support system. So what are you doing to make sure that you're giving them the best support possible? Yes, I love Facebook Live. I really do. It's awesome. So, okay, so let's move on. Thank you guys for your feedback. I love it. So, Lindsay Callis, right? Hopefully, I said that correctly. I'm going to let you take over and talk next. And um, welcome to the call. Thank you. Okay. Hi, I'm Lindsay Callis. I am one of Sarah Griffith's coaches. And I'm kind of her easy coach that she signed. She posted her transformation one day, and I um, advertised about a challenge group and I was like hey what do I have to do to sign up and I bought my challenge pack and probably like the next day she called me and she's like hey we both have these business education degrees we can do this do you want to run with me and I was like okay so I was kind of like Sarah's easy coach that she got however I was a discount coach for probably about a year before I actually signed on but um, now I'm starting to run with her and I can't wait to go to the top with her so um, I'm going to talk to you. I use point systems a lot in my groups and I have a business education background. So a lot of the stuff that I use is stuff that I've used in my classroom and I found that it's worked, but I'm also finding that it works really well in challenge groups. And I use like simple little prizes with my um, groups and they're very simple, but people love them. Um, one of the prizes that I give is I go to the Dollar Tree and I buy their clear tumblers. Uh, you get 20 for 20 bucks and then I have a Cricut so I will actually vinyl cut myself little things and I place them onto the tumblers so they think it's like a personalized tumbler but really I do it and then what I do is I shove a little bit of tissue paper in I throw in a sample of Shakeology uh, if it's a guy I throw in something from the performance line if it's a girl I throw in Energize and a headband and I ship it off uh, go ahead you can go to the next slide the first thing I want to show you uh, this is my photo a day challenge. You're more than welcome to steal it and cover up the top half if you want, if you don't want to use my body. Um, but what I do with this is I kind of took it from Instagram. They used to have photo a day challenges all the time. And I used to participate in them only because they were fun to me and it was something different every single day. Now, some of these I have strategically placed. Like the first day is day one. It's before picture. I give them points if they want to email it to me or if they want to post it publicly. I count it either way. Um, I know there's a lot of people who are very uncomfortable with their before picture. And obviously, my last day is always the after picture. Now, if you look at this, like my day 6, 13, and 20, these are my Saturdays. And I kind of made these quick, easy posts. So the first one is a trainer. This can be a picture that they Google, hey, this is the program I'm doing. They can take a picture of their TV when they go to work out. Very simple workout tunes, what they like to listen to when they work out. They can just snap their playlist. And the last one, and I strategically do it last, is their lunch. And that's because that's usually towards the end of the challenge, and it's when they start to kind of fall off, and they start to kind of wander on me. So I like to keep their lunch as the last one for that Saturday. Now, day 7, 14, and 21, these are actually like Sunday posts, and these are really hard for some people. I personally love working out on Sundays because it's my stressful day. But I have the first Saturday is their sweat. So I want to see what they look like after they actually worked out. The second Sunday I have with them, it's their dinner. What did you eat? Did you eat as a family? Is everyone eating the same? Are you still on track? And the last one, this is typically their last day in the group. So it's some kind of reward. And I've actually found that most people, instead of posting like chocolate cake for the reward, they typically will post like a new outfit that they have for the reward. And what I like about the photo a day challenge is your creative challengers are going to find nice ways to stack everything 
And it kind of gives me ideas for when I want to post on Instagram or if I want to post to my Facebook page, I'm getting ideas from my actual challengers of ways to set up my pictures too. So what I do, um, I keep, I write all their names down in a book and I just keep a tally every day that they post. Um, I give them an update. I usually have anywhere from three to five people in every group that will complete every day. And then I usually have about six that will miss like two or three. So what I do is I put all of their names together and I give one grand prize out of it. Um, usually the grand prize isn't anything real fancy. It's usually like a journal or something. And then I give the shaker cups to the people who actually participated. Really, the shaker cups cost me maybe about $3 total when I'm all done with them. So they're not a big loss at all for me. Uh, you can go ahead and go to the next one. The next one I have, this one's a really fun one that I like. This is kind of like Aaron's point system. Um, this is my challenge group challenge points. I love this one. This is probably one of my favorite ones. The way I keep track with this, I tell my challengers, when I see your post and when I write down your points, I am going to like it and I'm going to comment on it. So if I don't like or comment on your picture within 24 hours, call me out and tag me in it. That way I know that I have everyone and I'm getting all of your points. I also put um, all of their points and their names in a Google Sheet. And I set it so that they can only view it. And then I put it in the file section of the group. So they're constantly seeing where they stand along with the other challengers. Um, if I don't have anyone that doesn't log anything, I don't put their name on it until they have points to log so there's not someone sitting at zero. The way I set my points, um, my 1.1s are the ones I think that are kind of simple. So daily check-in, a motivational quote. Um, a picture of where they're going to work out, a picture of their outfit, something simple. They can take a picture and they can post. Now, no matter what they post, it automatically counts as their daily check-in. So their first post is always two points. I kind of give them like a freebie with their check-in. Now, my two point ones, these are ones that they kind of have to think about a little bit more. They have their main meal, so their breakfast, their lunch, and their dinner. And they can get two points for each meal. A uh, picture of their shape, because that's super important. Anything that they list from their favorite workout move, um, a weakness from the day, something they struggled with, or something that they did really well with, they can put. So maybe they're going to put a motivational quote, and they're going to put a picture of their shake beside it, and then they're going to say, my favorite workout move was this, I really struggled with this, but I rocked this, and that's nine points that they'll get just from maybe two pictures, but they actually listed things, and I know where they stand. Um, my three-point categories are my before and afters, um, only because a lot of people don't like to take the sweaty selfies in my groups. I don't know why. I love my sweaty selfies. I don't have to look nice at them at all, and I'm a huge fan of that. And then my five-point one, this is Erin's ten-point. I should probably up this now that I'm thinking about it. But I give them five points for a referral for a challenge pack, posting a workout or a food picture to the personal page, and tagging me in it. And you'll notice when I have people who are doing this challenge because they'll be posting like right and left and especially towards the end when they're really close, um, you'll see I'll be tagged in a whole bunch of posts like out of nowhere. And I'm like, oh, hey, look, my challengers are checking in. And I can usually tell before I'm actually into the challenge group. Um, the My Challenge Tracker app makes this so simple to track to because you can go in and click on each individual person and you can see all of their posts. So maybe you miss one of their posts, you can literally go in and see exactly what they're posting every day. And this way you can kind of make sure that they're not doubling up on the posts also. Um, go ahead and go to the next slide. These are for my week two Saturday and my week three on Saturday. Um, I give them a point system that is doubled on the second Saturday. And I post this blue one that says, because weekends are hard, today only points are doubled. On occasion, I'll post it on a Sunday instead of a Saturday because sometimes I have repeat challengers and I don't want them to stock up. And then the last week I do it, I do because we're almost there. Today, only points are tripled. And when I do this, I do it on purpose because there's some people who won't post until that very last week. And once they start posting in there, they will like triple all of their points and they'll start tagging me like no other and they'll start referring people and it helps my business because I'm getting the referrals and people are getting attention to me, but they really want that prize. And so it's helping them too. And then it's helping them stay accountable in that last week. And that's kind of like their crunch time. 
And then my last thing I have, you can go to the last one. Um, I'm a teacher, so we do reading apprenticeship strategies. So I actually use this in my classroom almost every day. Um, the one I use in my classroom is not hashtag Beachbody on demand. It's um, bust for business education. But what I do is I make a bingo card and I don't let my challenger see what I put on my bingo card or where I put it on my bingo card. This is an example of my blank one that I use. And I will give them a list. I give them a list of about 25 things that I could possibly have on my bingo card. And what I let them do throughout the week, they're allowed to post and I show them what I'm going to use and what's actually on the card. So they can pick something. So maybe I have a motivational quote or maybe I have sweaty selfie. And if they post something that I have on my bingo card, I just put their initials somewhere in that square. And then once someone gets bingo, I'll take a picture of the bingo card and I post it in the group. And I'm like, congratulations, you got Beachbody on demand. And I send them a small prize for winning. There are some times that this bingo card will get filled up five times in three weeks just because challengers are posting and posting and posting and they wanna see where the spots are on the card. And there are times that I'll have it and they're so close, so I give them like a little hint and I'll be like, today I want you to post something motivational because I need someone to hit that just so I can clear the card and move on. But I never put them in the same spot. So if you have people who are going in and out of challenge groups and they're not always consistently in the same one, but you wanna keep them pulling in, this is a good way to mix it up because they don't know where your spots are gonna be. I've also seen it where people make their own cards, but I, I did it once where they made their own cards and they kind of cheated and they put the easy things all in a line. And when I fill it out, I kind of space it out and I put all of like my important ones, like my sweaty selfie, my picture of the shake, um, a recipe that I posted and stuff like that. I try to do those all like in my general diamond area that makes it easy for them to post. Um, you're welcome to use any of these if you want. I'll even post them in the team page, but I am done. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Awesome. Thank you, Lindsay. That was great. All right. So what you guys learn from this one? I really like the photo of the day challenge actually a lot. Um, I think that's a great idea. I also like the keeping the list with, um, like the Google document, so it's view only. I think that's a good idea. So I definitely think there are things um, that I would adopt for sure. And I love like the way you just structured things to get, get people going even on the weekends and, and keep people engaged. So I think that's pretty incredible. Yeah. And when people, and whenever they tag you for not checking in, I think that's a good one too. <laughs> that keeps you on top of it too. I really, really like it. So many notes. Good, good. And I think that um, the ex the things that are important to you guys is there's a lot of information. So like you don't have to start all of this tomorrow, but kind of decide like, okay, how can I slowly start to drip this into my challenge groups? Um, and yes, and yes, get this going too. So, and the app is really awesome. It does make it so easy to keep track of your customers and to keep track of your, of where people are at in the progress. So I do, I agree. So awesome. So, all right. So Last but certainly not least, we have Chrysanthi. I'm going to let her take over and introduce herself to you guys all, and she's going to share a little bit about what she does um, to run Effective Challenge Group. So go ahead. Do you want me to leave you leave this up or put you on the screen? Oh, wait. I can share. I have my one image that I can share, so I'll do that. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Hi, guys. I'm Chrysanthi. As Melanie said, I am um, one of Melanie's personally sponsored coaches, and I'm super excited to be talking to you guys tonight. I promise not to talk for too long because I tend to do that, but I know it's late. So um, I just wanted to give you guys a few tips as to what has helped me to have really active challenge groups. To be honest with you, um, I've been a coach for a little over two years now, and there are times when my challenge groups get so stale that I don't get excited about them and I just kind of go through the motions. And I think that like the overall thing that I have found is that when I am feeling like burnt out by challenge groups and not into them, my challengers can feel that maybe and are the same exact way. So um, back in March, a couple of one of my personally sponsored coaches and one of her coaches put our heads together and we all kind of came up with the idea to do a biggest loser challenge, but we wanted to switch things up a little bit and we just started to put plans in motion and we were, you know, you know, bouncing ideas off of one another and 
we got really excited and I think that's where it all started to happen. So uh, the first tip that I can give you is to, you know, switch it up, like use the tips that we're giving you on this call tonight. Um, put your heads together with other coaches and don't just get stuck in the routine. And I am saying this from experience, don't get stuck in the routine of using a guide and feeling like you, you know, I, it's so convenient to follow those guides that are out there and they're so helpful and, and they really are great resources. But when we as coaches get into the habit of just leaning on that and, you know, scheduling out our posts because it's helpful, we like, it just becomes another thing to check off of our daily to-do list, at least for me. So, you know, like I said, when that happens to me, I, I definitely feel like my challengers can feel that as well. It's like, oh, I posted in my group and now I can go on with my day. And, and I don't want you to think that I'm saying it, you need to be present in your groups all day long, but just kind of be a little bit more authentic and more genuine. And, and while you're using the information from those guides for, you know, support and information and for the knowledge that you want to present to them, um, also just be you and, and share from your experience because, you know, I did not start out as a challenger like many people did. However, I've been in enough groups and I, my life has been changed by being a part of them. So I can still be authentic and speak from that experience. So, um, definitely I like to say, you know, I'm very off the cuff. So I think Facebook live has been a really great feature for me. I love, love more than anything to post, you know, just to jump on and do a Facebook live, even in a sweaty selfie, I'll do that. Or, you know, as soon as I have an idea, I'll post in there and just, you know, if I, if I want to do like a quick water challenge or something, I'll hop on Facebook live because I feel like then they can, they can feel my energy as well, which is really, really, like I said, it's, it, I think it all comes down to the energy. So anyway, um, the one group that we had done a few months ago was the Biggest Loser Challenge, and I'm just going to go through some of the things that were really helpful for getting the excitement going in that group. So for one thing, it was a pretty big group. Um, mine aren't always big. Sometimes I do them just by myself. Sometimes I have other coaches with me. This one was a big group, um, which you know has its pros and cons, I think, but th this worked out really well for us. So the first thing that we did when we started off our biggest loser challenge, um, and I'm going to share my screen for a second, just so you guys can see the banner, um, that we created and you can kind of understand what I'm saying. So, uh, the first thing that we did was we decided on these categories for prizes. Now I don't always do prizes. I love the ideas that I've gotten tonight. And so I will definitely be implementing some of them. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I, stink at like remembering to mail prizes out. So I, and I'm not really good at tracking points, but, um, this worked for us. So here's what we did. We, we came up with, you know, we wanted it to be the biggest loser and we advertised for that, but I didn't want people to feel like it was the biggest loser in the sense that they had to have the most pounds lost or, you know, the number get too caught up in like the number on the scale, because we talk so much about, you know, the transformation from the inside out and the whole, you know, I talk so much as a coach about how much coaching has changed my life and these challenge groups have changed my lives. And, and I really talk about the energy and the, the friendships that you can form. So we had that in mind when we created these categories. So the first was a team challenge and I'll talk about teams in a second, but the first was a team challenge. And we said that each Friday um, and at pop-up times throughout the month, we'll post a team challenge and the team with the most points in the total at the end of the month wins. So what we did there was um, we had created teams within the group. And what we did was we said, okay, guys, you know, we want you to come up with teams of four people. Um, we would allow for three or five if we needed to and, and do points accordingly. Um, and we said, you know, post a little bit about yourself. If you know someone in the group, you're, you're welcome to team up with them. We created a document so that as they added people to their teams, they, you know, could add that in. So we knew when we had four people on each team, we also said, you know, think about if you don't know anyone in this group, what time of day do you work out? Do you have kids? What are your struggles? What are your interests? And so they really match themselves up. So it was kind of taking that idea of having a success partner, but then making it a team so that that way, if one person, instead of having just one success partner, if one person on the team fell off, there were other people as a buffer. But then also if one person fell off, there were three people saying, get up and go, you know? So that was really, really fun. And then what they kind of took the ball and, and ran with it was they then created like team names. So our winning team was hashtag team fabulous which I loved and they were awesome like and so on Fridays we would do things like do a squat challenge do a plank challenge do you know just different things that I'm sure you know all of you have done 
But what we then did was we had people that were creating, you know, pick play posts of videos of them or photo collages, or we had like teachers who were doing plank challenges with their students and doing that. Like it just became really fun and they became really competitive. And what we did too to, to help track that was we made them use the like the hashtag hashtag team challenge um, so that we could easily find those posts in the group if we needed to. Um, so that was the team aspect, and I think that was one of my favorite things about it because um, it allowed for, you know, like I said, I talk a lot about the friendships that are formed in these groups, and it allowed for amazing friendships to be formed. And because of that, the energy level was up. People stayed the course. We, of course, had people die off. You know, I think a lot of us over the course of the group will have, you know, it starts out really strong and then kind of dies off. So that did happen. But like this team Flabulous, for example, they were, they stuck through to the end and they won prizes and they continued on. A lot of them actually signed up to be coaches um, and have now gone into new challenge groups as well. And it's just cool to see like those friendships formed with people who are, you know, they, they wouldn't have normally known each other. So that was a really cool aspect of the group and probably my favorite. The next category was the most valuable challenger. So again, going with the theme of not wanting it to be the biggest loser in the sense of they, you know, what you see on TV and it's who lost the most weight and whatever. Um, we wanted the most valuable challenger award will be awarded to the challenger who stands out as a leader, cheerleader, supporter, and more. This is a person who is present in the group, adds value, and supports everyone. Now, this, of course, we wanted this to increase the energy and to get as many people posting as possible. But this also allowed us to see who would stand out as a potential coach. Because if the person was posting a lot and encouraging everyone else and keeping everyone going, that's what we do as coaches, right? So already that was setting us up um, for making that transition and suggesting they become a coach. I remember someone saying on a call, actually, when I opened my notebook tonight for this call, I found my notes. And I don't remember who it was, so I apologize for not giving them credit, but they had said, you know, when you're running your challenge groups, treat your challengers as if they're already coaches. And that way, you know, it becomes a natural transition. It's like when you say to them, wow, you'd be an amazing coach, you truly mean it because you're kind of grooming them to do that. So that most valuable challenger, um, that was a fun thing. And it, you know, it boosts people's confidence to know that they, they not only change their own life, but they help to change people's lives in the group. And then our third category was our big category, and that was the biggest loser. But again, we wanted to focus on this not just being the number on the scale. So it says, to enter for the grand prize, you must submit your before and after pictures and measurements. And, and this was our twist, a paragraph describing what has changed in your life. Think big picture beyond the physical. This was just something that we really wanted to do because, you know, I think going back to what Erin was saying, we wanted it to be more of a mindset thing. You know, a lot of people have had weight loss success, but unfortunately, you know, bad habits start to creep back in. They fall off the wagon, life gets in the way, and they kind of lose sight of all of that. And I felt like by having them do that, it was it was asking them to step outside of their comfort zone and really connect connect to the bigger picture. So that was something that was really helpful. And to be honest, we didn't have a lot of people who submitted for that, but it was cool for them to each see those people who did submit, you know? So those were our categories. Um, I think, like I said, the biggest thing that made this challenge group successful and the thing that we've taken away from it and now implemented into our other groups, it was the energy level. And one of the things that we did to kick this group off um, that we'll continue to do in the future was we started off with a Zoom call. So um, the first official day of that group, we, we did a Zoom call and we were really silly with it. There were three of us and um, we wanted it to be really high energy. So we... <laughs> My husband was like, if I was in your group, I would totally like unplug myself at that point. But we, uh, we were just really silly. Like we, we started the zoom call and we played the theme music from, you know, um, if, if you use beach body on demand now, there's no more theme music, but there's like that song. If you pop in the DVDs that like, you hear that, like, I can't, I don't even know what off the top of my head. Anyway, we played that music and we were like dancing. So like the intro to the zoom call, like we're like all dancing around like idiots, you know, and like, just, just letting people know, like we're here to have fun and be silly. So we did that. And then we just kind of gave some information about ourselves, our backgrounds. And then we explained what they could expect from the group and how they could get the most from it. And it was just really fun. And it just started us off on a positive note and showed them that they were, we were there for more than just to, you know, 
have them buy a program from us really. So um, those were the tips that really helped us with that challenge. Um, going forward, we're still trying to implement those things. You know, so I do encourage my challengers to find teammates and to create those teams and to do that team challenge. And to be honest, sometimes they bite, sometimes they don't. It really, as you know, you have some groups that are, you know, it just depends on the people that you have in the group. But that's what's really worked for us. Um, so hopefully you guys can have that bring you some success as well. And that's all I've got, Mel. If you guys have any questions, you can feel free to uh, comment on the team page or send me a message. Thank you. Will you take a screenshot of your banner and will you share that with us? Sure. I, yeah. I have like, I saved the uh, image. Do you want me to just okay. upload that? Sure. You know what I'll do is in the dream team, I'll just create an album that just says um, like running successful challenge groups. And if you guys just want to upload any of your images from tonight, that would be super helpful. And then I'll just upload the slides and everything in there for tonight. So I think that is such an awesome, I love the zoom call idea. Um, when the 21 day fix was released, I did that and I recorded it and now I just use it whenever it's part of like my guide but just going through the nutrition guide with people and going through like what the equipment that you need and how to modify and how to make a meal plan um, even just this past Sunday I sat down and I because I'm doing that how to lose the last 10 pounds group and so I sat with my computer on I had zoom on and I was recording and I sat and I planned out a whole day and I meal plan and I showed them how I track my containers and I just talked to the computer screen but like that was really helpful for them to hear people to hear how you plan it out so take the time to really explain that sort of stuff because that really that really helps people and they get to ask questions and even doing a weekly call like if you want to make it like a meeting that every Wednesday you come and you talk about a different topic and you celebrate success you know victories with your challengers that helps too so I think these are all really great ideas and ways to spice it up and I think that Krasanthi you hit the nail on the head like sometimes we just post we copy and we paste we copy and we paste and we just we just go through the motions it's kind of like our business. If you just go through the motions with inviting in, in your posts, even on social media, it, it kind of loses its luster and it just, it's not as effective anymore. So I really, really like it. Um, yes, I'll upload my Zoom call for the 21 day fix too. I can, I can do that. You mean the one explaining like the preseason or the fix extreme one that I just did? Go let me know which one. So I can do those. Um, but yes, no, great, great tips, guys. Thank you, Chrysanthi. Thanks, Lindsay. And of course, Erin, even though she's not on live, I really appreciate you guys giving me your time. And I know that you don't get paid for this, so I really appreciate it. And I know you guys are already busy as it is. So thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart. So guys, if there's any questions at all, now is a great time to ask. Otherwise, I will let you guys go because I'm sure you guys all have to check in with your challengers, right? I know I do. <laughs> awesome, awesome, guys. Thank you. Groups no longer than 60 days recommended. I don't do anything longer than 60 days anymore. Um, mostly 30 days or six weeks, and then I just roll them from one group to the next. Are you guys kind of the same one? They're both shaking their head yes. Yeah. Good. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you, ladies. Have a good evening, and I will see you guys later. Take care, everybody. Bye.